I got some questions about how I sharpen my plane blades and so I'm going to run through in this video how I sharpen this little block plane. So after I take the blade out, you can see maybe on the top there how there's a bunch of chips cut out of it. Broken off the, off the top. Um, so I'm going to use this grinder here to take out those chips and to put a hollow grind in the edge there. So I'm going to turn this on. This is a 32 grit uh, sort of the standard stone that comes with these. It's not a fancy, fancy stone. Um, I have these pieces of metal that are they're thicker than a plain blade, but close enough to give me an idea. I have them ground to specific angles. So this one's 30 degrees, this one's 34 degrees, and this one's 25 degrees. So I can, I can put it on the tool rest and look from the side and move the tool rest up or down, it's already set for 30, until it matches this angle. If you don't have a one like this, you can take a plain blade that already has a bevel on it like this, and you can put it up at that angle. So I can see actually that I probably sharpen this one at 25 degrees. Uh, my dad uses this one, so, um, and you can see what happened to it, so I'll probably put it, just keep it at this and do 30 degrees. One trick you can do too, which I don't I don't do that often anymore, but you can take a magic marker and you can color in the bevel so that once the bevel is taken or as you're sharpening it you can see where the bevel's taken off. So when I'm sharpening this, I will be sneaking up over here and then making one pass across and just be repeating that motion. That way I'm not going back and forth and heating up the corners too much. And uh, before I do anything with it, I'm going to dress it with this. This is a, a wheel dresser, those little diamonds in the end. Okay, so now I have all of the Sharpie taken off. So 
just for you guys, I'm going to color that back in. So now that bevel has a hollow grind to it. So when it's put on a, it's a concave uh, grind. So when it's put on a flat surface, it only touches on the very front and the very back of the bevel. Right there and right there. So here I have some diamond stones and this is 600 grit. I'm not sure what this one is. It's, ne it's the next one up. I think it's 1,200. This is 8,000. And then over here I have uh, Jewelers Rouge or a uh, yeah, Jewelers Rouge. It's that green stuff that you put on straps. This is leather with that on it. So I have my 600 diamond stone and I roll it. I can start with the blade flat, bevel down, and then I roll it up until I feel it, feel it touch the front of the blade and it wants to stay there a little bit. So I will very carefully apply pressure on the edge, close to the edge, and the back is just supporting the blade. Hardly any pressure or anything's coming from the back hand. But I push down, make a couple passes. I find it helps to just go one direction, just to stay consistent. But you can see how the Sharpie, there's no Sharpie on the front or, or, or back of part of that bevel, and it's just in the middle. Now it's not quite on these edges yet, so I'm going to keep going. It's a little uneven because I was doing it freehand. When I've done this before, I've usually used six inch stones. These are eight inch stones, so the, the hollow grind is a little less. So you can actually see how, um, I've actually almost taken the hollow back out. Sorry that that's out of focus. But so I've, as once it's shiny all along that front edge, I'm done. And I now do the back of the blade. So I'm pushing down here and a lot of people put a little uh, steel ruler over here. I don't really worry about that. I just worry about applying some pressure over here and uh, maybe lifting up a tiny bit every once in a while. But and that gets rid of the burr that the grinder established. So then I'll move on to the 120 grit. And this blade was pretty bad. Once it's touched up, um, once it's, if this gets dull again without those big pittings, it should be a lot, it should take a lot fewer passes. Like I'll sharpen a chisel and I'll only need to do about three or four passes on this rough stone. So I do the back of the blade on the 8000. And then I'm over here on my um, straw. Oops. Sorry. That's what happens with a $5 tripod. Okay. The tap broken. So I have my strop, and I'm going to do the back of the blade a couple times. So this is leather glued onto a piece of wood filled with a certain, uh, I've heard it called all sorts of things, but um, I, rouge is the, the thing that, the name that I tend to use. Honing compound, it's often called too. So I'm just doing the back of the blade a couple times. It's important you go backwards because it is, after all, just leather. And if you were to go forward, you would slice it. So I've, the magic numbers that I've heard are 10 times on each side to start with. And I'm trying to, I'm trying to hold it at the same angle I did on the stones so that the whole bevel is touching the, the leather. That, I've had, you know, it's hard to get that exact angle, so I don't worry too much about it. 
and then I'll, I'll feel if there's any burr left. There's not a burr. I am going to go on the back. Careful not to slice yourself. And on the front once or twice. It's helpful to go back and forth so that even if there's not a burr that you can feel, if there's still one there, then this will this will fatigue it to make it fall off. Okay. So that should be good. So we'll put our plane back together here. Okay, now that this is all sharpened up, let's see how it cuts. Should be about right. We get nice, this is spruce. This is spruce, by the way, so. And we get nice, even shavings. Even with all the explaining, that, that took me very little time compared to doing all the sharpening by hand on flat stones. Using the hollow grind on the, on the fast grinder makes it such a breeze. One thing that I was doing um, while I was using the grinder that I couldn't tell you about because it was going to be too loud is I was keeping a close eye on how hot the blade was getting as I was sharpening it. And if I had um, aluminum oxide stones and not these sort of standard, I think they're corborundum stones or something. Um, these get much hotter than is ideal. And so um, you, you don't want your blade to be too hot that you can't touch any part of it. Because if that's the case, then you can be damaging the, uh, the blade so that it won't hold its edge anymore. So while you, um, you couldn't quite see, but Every once in a while, if I noticed it was getting too hot, I did have a cup of water there that I was dipping it in, but usually I don't, I don't have to do that if it's a, just a touch-up operation. Well, thank you for watching this quick video on how I like to sharpen my plane blades. There are, of course, many, many, many different ways of sharpening, and if you have a favorite way that's different than this, I'd love to hear about it in the comments section, and I hope to see you in a future video.